Hey everyone, back to you in today's video. We're doing the CFS six months look ahead today. Uh, we're going to get all the charts from the CFS V2 model together for uh, the coming six months, taking us from October through to March. Can you believe? Now, please not take uh, what you see in this video too seriously. The charts are better, so I might as well use them. But the CFS V2 model is pretty unreliable at the best of times, I have to say. And particularly as we're getting out towards three, four, five, six months away. Uh, well, obviously, it's really just for fun uh, and amusement purposes only. But as I said, the charts are there, so I might as well use them. And people seem to enjoy uh, the CFS six months look ahead, so I don't mind doing it uh, for you to see what the charts are showing. But uh, it's not to be relied upon in any way. Uh, so those caveats aside, we'll uh, do a CFS six months look ahead in a moment. Before I get on with that, though, just want to mention the advertising, the video ads, I page you at gaswebbers.com. You can play on video ads. You'll be able to support gaswebbers.com. Thanks very much for doing that. The video ad essentially pays for me to sit here and talk to you via website. So you can hit play, see what that video ad is about. Um, you'll be able to support Gaswebbers weather this. And thanks so much for doing that. So as normally, as normal, we'll start off with the 700 bit of a height anomaly charts, and then we'll have a look at the corresponding temperature and precipitation charts as we go along. So uh, this is where we start for October 2014 next month. Uh, this is 700 bit of a height anomaly prediction from the CFS B2 model for October, and it's showing that we've got a trough of the uh, below average heights there across Scandinavia, and over here as well, extending into northern parts of Europe. We've got this ridge of high pressure in the Atlantic. The jet stream is uh, doing something like that. So it's more or less running through the country and on into Central Europe. It's a pretty unsettled signal, uh, to be honest, that we will be looking at quite a bit of rain coming in off the Atlantic, I think. Probably not all that warm either, because uh, between that trough up to the northeast and the ridge out to the west, uh, we're probably bringing in sort of west to northwesterly flow. So I don't think it will be overly warm uh, with that. And certainly quite unsettled, particularly, of course, uh, for the north of the country. Moving through to November, this has been a pretty consistent signal from the CFS V2 model for some time. Uh, we move that area of below average heights out to the west of the northwest country, a very deep trough setting up in the Atlantic, got a ridge of high pressure here in the central part of the Atlantic. A strong jet stream, I think, is running between these uh, two masses, the low pressure and the high pressure. This strong jet stream is uh, pushing through um, British Isles and going on into Europe as well. That could be potentially a very unsettled month. It could also be quite a stormy month, but uh, with the westerly flow, I don't think it would be particularly calm with the position of that trough and the ridge uh, underneath. I think that's a fairly mild signal uh, for November, but it could be a pretty wet month. Now, very little change as we run through to December, actually, but we set the below average heights up really over the top of the country, so uh, if anything, we're probably cutting off that very mild Atlantic flow, and we're sort of shifting the trough right over the top of the British Isles. We've got this ridge here uh, in the central part of the Atlantic again. That could just start to ridge northwards a little bit, I would think, um, and maybe pulling some colder air around this trough at times. It is a cold signal, don't get me wrong. It's generally, uh, I would say, suggest a generally average sort of temperature signal of uh, that. But at times, particularly if we could get this ridge uh, to push a little bit further northwards, we could push some colder air into that trough at times. It's an unsettled signal, though, uh, for December. So if this is right, we're looking at an unsettled end to uh, 2014, October, November, December could all post. Uh, above average rainfall, actually, um, with these anomalies. So this is how we start 2015, and again, very little change, really. We've still got that area of, of uh, below average heights there, sitting to uh, the north of the country, now centred more towards Iceland, if anything. We've got this ridge here around Newfoundland, also setting up a little bit of a ridge through the central part of the, the Mediterranean. Um, I think the jet stream again is doing something like that, so it's again a generally westerly signal here. We've not got much going on over Greenland, we've not got much sign of Northern blocking up there. I think overall again it's a westerly sort of signal uh, for January. And with a trough a little bit further northwards of this ridge in the Atlantic, perhaps a little bit milder uh, than December as well. Now running through to February, we get 
<coughs> excuse me, we get a little bit of a change coming along uh, for Fed. We get a ridge of high pressure setting up in the central part of the Atlantic and pushing a bit further northwards as well, maybe hinting at going up uh, towards Iceland. The trough is shifting off towards the northeast of Scandinavia. Um, I think the jet stream here is uh, quite interesting. It's probably going... Uh, something like that through the states, it's cold for the states I think, I mean it's running up around that ridge and then it's probably coming south around a trough, uh, something like that, so we're almost on the cold side of the jet there uh, for February, well it's a cold signal I think uh, for February um, and I think could be certainly at risk against some northerly interludes with that, I don't know if it's a desperately cold month but sort of cold snaps is what I would suggest uh, with that sort of anomaly we would need to push that area of yellow further north up towards uh, Greenland to get a properly cold month but it is colder I think uh, than anything we've seen so far uh, in February and then finally we go through to March and this is perhaps the coldest signal of all but it's six months away, a very long time out but then uh, we're setting up a trough of low pressure around and to the east of the British Isles, we've got this ridge here just to the south of the Greenland, the jet stream would be going something like that. Um, that is a properly cold signal, I think, as we're going through into March. So the idea, I think, from the CFSB 2 model this month is that the winter is starting off relatively mild, although December could have some colds out. January looks pretty mild, and then the second half of the winter gradually gets colder, so it turns colder through February, although it's not a desperately cold month. I mean, then we get to March, you start of spring, and we're more or less locked into a properly cold pattern then, I would suggest. Although, ideally, again, you want this ridge to be a little bit further north, centred up over Greenland. But it's as close as we get on any of these charts to a properly cold month there, uh, with that, with that trough of low pressure sitting to the south and the east of the country. So that's how the 700 bit of our height anomalies are looking. Let's see how the temperature and precipitation uh, stacks up. This is the temperature signal uh, for October. Remember, quite a westerly month being signaled for October. And temperatures are coming out about average. I think that's right, to be honest. Winds would be more of a west to northwester, uh, if anything. So I wouldn't be expecting a particularly warm month. Temperatures around the seas average. Could even go a little bit below average, I would suggest, at times. But no real indication of that on this. It's uh, around average. I think that's about right uh, for the 700 bit of our height anomaly prediction. Now November is coming out average as well and I'm a little bit surprised about it's a very westerly uh, sort of month for November so I'd expect of course a westerly month in October is probably about average but to get through to November a westerly month is probably an above average signal because you're starting to think about uh, frost as we get through to November and maybe in a little bit of uh, snow at times that's certainly within the boundaries of the typical November uh, but you could get some frosty nights and you could get uh, a little bit of snowfall occasionally as well. So the temperature, the overall temperature average sort of reflects that. So by the time we get through to November, a westerly signal is probably above average. So if anyone will correct this really uh, to a warmer than average month, well, notice most of Europe is warmer than average as well. Going through to December, again, it's an average temperature signal. I think that's right, because we've got that trough then instead of to the west of the country, as we have in November. We've got the trough sitting right over the top of the country, so I think that's about right. Again, at times you would be at uh, risk, or uh, you could sort of entrench some colder air into that trough from the north and the northwest. So, uh, yeah, I think an average temperature signal for December is about right there. It's suggesting average uh, for January, really. Notice throughout these months, it's really the northeast and the east of Europe that's been seen to be warmer than average. The west is generally coming out cooler, not cold, but coming out cooler uh, in those average temperature brackets. Now, I think that could be a little bit warmer than that, really, for uh, January. But it's a weak signal, actually, in January. It's hard to decipher from a 700 millibar height anomaly prediction quite what's going on. But I would probably increase that a little bit more uh, towards average. Now we go through to uh, February, and quite interestingly, again, <laughs> we've got an average temperature signal here. So the CFS model is either seeing average on all of these months, so it hasn't really got the temperature signal. I would probably trend uh, towards the latter, to be honest. Again, notice very strong signal across Scandinavia and eastern parts of Europe uh, for a warmer than average month. But for us, we're coming out average. I think we could perhaps lower that a little bit to below average, because we've got the high pressure sort of sitting out to the west of the country, uh, somewhere around uh, there. 
blocking off the Atlantic to some degree. The jet stream would be running around that and then uh, coming down something uh, like that. So uh, I think probably you could just about increase that to slightly below average. But again, an average temperature signal is within the bounds of what we see from the 700 millibar height on friction. And then interestingly, remember March, I said, uh, is the strongest signal for a cold month. And we do start seeing some blue appearing uh, then, particularly for Spain, uh, Portugal and France. But also some little wedges of blue for England and for Ireland. The reason that's happening is that we've got uh, blocking setting up further to the north in this sort of area of the Atlantic. We've got a trough sitting uh, just here and again probably uh, just here. The jet stream uh, with that is going uh, something uh, like that. It's a proper trough sitting there across much of Western uh, Europe. So I think March is the strongest signal to be a colder than average month out of the six, most definitely. But of course, it's a very long way away. It's just for fun and not to be relied upon. So here is the precipitation forecast for the next six months. See how these stack up in terms of the temperature and 700 millibar height anomaly prediction for uh, October. We're coming out generally around average, but a little bit wetter than average in the West. Most of Europe, though, is coming out uh, wetter than average, particularly Scandinavia and central parts of uh, Europe. So it's a little bit wetter to the east, if anything, but I think generally most of northern Europe is having a very unsettled time of it as we go through into October. November, westerly month, so again, we're coming out average to above average for British Isles and for Ireland and for France as well. Generally, the west of Europe coming out uh, average to above average with rainfall. Into December, Quite interesting, the uh, above average height anomalies are more to the, the uh, above average rainfall anomalies, I should say, are more towards the south. Now you remember that the height anomaly is quite interesting because it has that trough sitting more or less over the country. Um, this indicates that the jet stream could actually be a little bit further south than that. Maybe the jet stream running through something like that. If that's right, we're on the cold side of the jet, actually under that trough of low pressure. So, Maybe we could bring some colder air into it, feed some colder air into it. I'm not sure about that, but uh, certainly the idea of how wet it is over at northern parts of Spain and into France is that the jet stream is pro probably trending a little bit to the south of the country, so it could be a wetter uh, and colder signal um, for the continent and for the British Isles as well. Now, January, a bit of a poser. Remember, the 700 bit of our height anomaly prediction wasn't all that strong. Neither was the temperature prediction, and neither is the rainfall prediction either. But if anything, we're probably around average. Most central parts of Europe coming out around average as well. Notice it's drier than average through Spain and Portugal, and the central Mediterranean. That's just that little ridge is developing down there. It's a bit of a complication factor that it could bring up some milder air from the southwest at times if it was to form. When we go through to February, we turn drier than average, and the reason for that, of course, is that we're blocking off the Atlantic out to the west. So the pattern is changed as we get through to February. Maybe, maybe January is the transition to that sort of pattern change from an unsettled start to the winter to something drier later on, and that's the reason the signal for January isn't particularly strong because it's a transitional month. But for February, we're coming out drier than average, and that's, I think that's about right, we're blocking off the Atlantic. And as we get through to March, again, coming out a little bit drier than average as well. And that is uh, what you would expect with uh, blocking in the Atlantic and the jet stream sort of bending around a trough, which is more or less centred over uh, France and eastern part, uh, western parts of Germany, possibly even the Mediterranean as well. And notice Norway also coming out with drier than the average precipitation is in March indicating that maybe there could be some sort of blocking uh, developing in this sort of area around British Isles and going up to Scandinavia. So I think what the CFS model is seeing for this month is that we're going to have a pretty wet end to the year. October, November, December could all come out with above average rainfall. Um, and it could get a little bit colder as well, perhaps, as we get through to uh, December in particular. We could start to entrench some colder air into that trough. And then I think we've seen a bit of a pattern change emerge as we get through the middle and latter stages of the winter. So it could be a winter of two halves and something to start off with. Much drier later on, but also the potential as that pattern change occurs, we block off the Atlantic. 
the potential to turn it quite a bit colder uh, later on in the winter and into the start of spring. It will be very interesting to see how all this stacks up. Very interesting to see next month's update uh, for from the CFS model uh, for the next six. It's until not to be relied upon, so uh, don't take it too, too seriously. Uh, whatever you do, next week we'll be looking at uh, the second winter update. Very interesting. That's going to be, I think. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.